Jupiter is the most massive planet in our solar system, and due to its proximity to the terrestrial planets, it exerts a relatively large gravitational force on these inner planets. Jupiter essentially pushes and pulls them out of their ideal circular orbits. And in this study, we explore the influence of Jupiter on the orbital dynamics of the Earth and the implications for our planet's uh, spin dynamics and climate variability. This is directly relevant to exoplanetary science as we discover more and more planets in multiplanetary systems with potentially habitable planets. Uh, there has been a long lasting debate on whether it is beneficial for a planet in the habitable zone to have a giant companion or not in terms of making that planet more or less uh, habitable. For instance, in the 1980s, it was proposed that um, a giant planet could act as a shield and protect inner planets from harmful impacts. But later on, dynamic simulations showed that the impact rate could actually increase because Jupiter, Jupiter destabilizes smaller objects out of their orbit and could actually shoot them towards the Earth. Um, additionally, impacts are not always harmful, but can also carry essential volatiles to terrestrial planets um, that are necessary for habitable conditions. So as we weigh the advantages against the disadvantages of having a giant companion, we should really consider also another important implications of the presence of a giant planet in a planetary system. And that is the gravitational impact on the smaller planets and how it can alter their orbits and indirectly also their spin dynamics. So currently for the Earth, Jupiter drives quasi-periodic cycles in the ellipticity or the eccentricity of the Earth, uh, Earth's orbit. The cycles are roughly 100,000 kilojears long and modulated by a 400 kilojears cycle, as can be seen in the bottom panel. Um, for the Earth, the orbit remains relatively circular and the amplitude of the eccentricity cycles is small. This means that the variability in the total amount of annual global mean insulation varies only sm slightly, but yet these slight changes are sufficiently large to drive drastic changes in global climate. For instance, the glacial interglacial cycles of the last million years are paced at eccentricity cycles. Um, if you look closely enough, you'll also see that the Earth's orbital inclination changes. And this doesn't affect the amount of insulation that the Earth receives on a global annual mean scale, but it does impact the tilt of the Earth relative to the Sun, which means that the distribution of the insulation changes across the latitudes. So you can imagine that if Jupiter would have been on a slightly different orbit, the orbital cycles of Earth and consequently also the insulation patterns of our planet would be different. So what does this mean in, for, in terms of the climate cycles and the habitability on Earth? To answer these questions, I use an ensemble of alternative solar system and body simulations. And in these simulations that are ran by our collaborator, John T. Horner, the initial position of Jupiter varies between 3.2 AU and 7.2 AU. The initial eccentricity of Jupiter varies systematically between 0 and 0 0.4. Um, not all of these systems are stable. Some of them are un dynamically unstable. For instance, when a planet collides with the sun, with another planet, or is ejected out of the system completely. Um, so the lifetime of each of those individual simulations are indicated in the figure. The eccentricity of Jupiter is indicated by the y-axis, whereas the semi-major axis of Jupiter is indicated by the x-axis. Um, overall, simulations where Jupiter has a low eccentricity they are dynamically more stable than when Jupiter would have had a high eccentricity. Uh, the red circle indicated here indicates our uh, current solar system configuration and will be indicated in the next few figures as well that have the same outline. So let's take a look at some of the results. Um, in these figures, the black regions indicate unstable simulations. Uh, some of these regions, for instance, around 4.5 AU and 6 AU, um, these are regions where Saturn and Jupiter are in resonance, which allows for a much wider range of stable configurations. Um, there are also regions of instability. For instance, if Jupiter would have been slightly more inward at 5 AU, um, the solar system would have been become dynamically unstable. Uh, in this figure um, on the left, we are now showing the maximum eccentricity that Earth's orbit reaches uh, for all the stable dynamical simulations. In general, the pattern that emerges is that when Jupiter's eccentricity increases, Earth's eccentricity increases as well.
Secondly, when Jupiter would be positioned more closely inwards, um, the rate at which Earth's eccentricity changes um, would change as well. So as Jupiter would have been moving closer inwards, the orbital cycles have a shorter duration. Currently, Earth's eccentricity has a period of around 100 kilo years, uh, with Jupiter at 3.2 AU, the main period would decrease up to uh, 30 kilo years. Since the annual global mean amount of insulation that the Earth receives is directly a function of eccentricity, we can calculate the maximum change in insulation. So for a modern Earth, insulation varies but by roughly 0.5 watts per square meter between an eccentricity maxima and minima. And this has been driving great climatic fluctuations like the glacial interglacial cycles. So if in some of our simulations that we record here, the difference uh, in insulation can sometimes reach two or sometimes even five watts per square meter. So you can imagine this could have massive implications for uh, the climate variability on the Earth's surface. We can do exactly the same analysis for the orbital inclination. And we find that if we change uh, Jupiter's orbit, it doesn't majorly influence the maximum change in the orbital inclination. However, if we change Jupiter's semi-major axis um, and move Jupiter closer inward, it does impact uh, the rate of change at which the inclination is changing. So Jupiter closer inward results in more rapid cycles in the orbital inclination. And in terms of habitability, we would like to investigate whether more rapid cycles or would improve the habitable, uh, habitable conditions or not. Um, but the orbital parameters are only part of the story. Um, the spin motions of a planet play an important role for the climate modulation and are directly affected by changes in the eccentricity and orbital inclination. Uh, because the Earth is not a rigid body, it produces an equatorial bulge as a result of its really fast rotation. And because the Moon and the Sun are not exactly aligned with the Earth's equator, where the bulge is forming, they essentially try to pull the bulge towards the ecliptic, which drives a precessional motion of the Earth's axis. The orbital inclination has a direct influence on the Earth's actual tilt, or the obliquity. So what I do is I apply an obliquity model to the output of the n-body simulations to calculate how obliquity and precession change over time. Um, here I'm showing the output of the obliquity model for precession on the left and for obliquity on the right. Um, and I'm using um, them on previous simulations that are most similar uh, to Earth's current Earth. So in blue, I plot the historical values for precession and obliquity. And in orange are the values that we calculate for the simulation most similar to our current um, solar system. And you see the comparison between the two figures shows that the model is working properly and it validates our method. So this obliquity model was applied to all the stable alternative solar system simulations. For obliquity on the left, it becomes evident that as we move Jupiter closer inwards, um, it results in much longer obliquity cycles. The rate at which Earth's axis precesses is not so much dependent on the semi-major axis or the eccentricity of Jupiter, but rather by the planetary architecture of the alternative solar system and the resonances within it. So now we find this interesting feature that when Jupiter is closer inwards, the eccentricity cycles that determine the total amount of insulation are relatively short, while the obliquity cycles that control the distribution of the insulation are relatively long. And this can have some interesting climatic consequences as various climate feedbacks act on different timescales. Uh, for instance, what would happen to the surface climate if the eccentricity cycles are as short as 30,000 year? Um, would we just experience really rapid glacial interglacial cycles or would the rate of change be too high for ice caps to grow and cover large surfaces? So what would happen to atmospheric dynamics or ocean circulations that are also important climate controllers? We took a first stab at trying to simulate the transient climate evolution across a one million year time interval and use a simple energy moisture balance model that is coupled to a dynamic 3D ocean model and a sea ice model, while applying also time varying astronomical forcing. So the figure shown here shows the simulation most comparable to our modern solar system. Earth's eccentricity cycles are roughly 100 kilo years long and vary between 0 and 0 0.5. Obliquity cycles are roughly 40 kilo years long. 
we find that as we simulate the sea ice variability, uh, seasonal sea ice varies with mainly eccentricity, whereas the year-round sea ice varies with precession. Um, the figure here shows a simulation where the planetary architecture is very different. Uh, Jupiter is much closer inwards. Earth's eccentricity cycles are 30 kilo years long and vary with a small amplitude, whereas the obliquity cycles are roughly 30,000 kilo years long and vary drastically between 20 and 30 degrees. Um, in this case, the seasonal sea ice varies with the obliquity, and the year-round sea ice is only present when the obliquity is low enough to sustain sea ice throughout the summer months. Uh, the surface climate dynamics between the two configurations are just very, very different. And I should also note that the model used here is relatively simple, and many of the climate feedbacks are not included. For instance, we do not simulate land-based ice, um, which can have very different dynamics to sea, uh, sea ice. Also, the response times is different than that of sea ice. So in future work, we do aim to use a more complex climate model that also uses a dynamic atmosphere so we can account for changing wind patterns and cloud dynamics. So I will leave the conclusions up here, but I do want to emphasize that as we find more planets in the habitable zone in multiplanetary systems, we should not ignore the long-term orbital evolution as we assess a planet's habitability. Um, so thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of your conference.